Amongst all the rubble where the World Trade Center once stood are bits and pieces of thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of computers. For companies that didn't store backups off-site, recovering that information on those drives is a daunting, if not hopeless, task. That's where data recovery companies come in. Many of them have offered to help companies in and around Ground Zero free of charge. Those companies can find data on hard drives that have survived all kinds of disasters. June 16, 2001, Tropical Storm Allison rages through Pennsylvania on its destructive path, slamming down 25 centimeters of rain in less than 12 hours. Seven people died in the state alone. Homes and businesses were awash. For one company, a collection agency, it meant all critical computer data was underwater. They had backups, but the backups were stored right next to the originals. When computer technician Randy Press got there, he found a mess. When we went in, there was a lot of mud, a lot of debris on the, on the floor. Inside the jukebox, when they opened them up, they had a lot of grit and dirt inside the optical platters. They were wet. We didn't know if they were going to warp or what the condition was, so we immediately just bagged them up, still wet, and we shipped them out here to CBL. And that's CBL Data Recovery in Markham, Ontario. Whether data is damaged by a fire, flood, computer malfunction, or human error, the experts here say there's an 85% chance they can get it back. That's crucial in this day and age when just about all of our vital information is stored in computers. So their lives are, are on these computers now. They're not just a little checkout computer. They can run a whole company on one device, and when that fails, they're in trouble. People, too, are relying on this technology. They're assuming it's going to run forever, and it's not. When it does fail, downtime is expensive, so CBL's recovery team moves quickly. In all, they got 125 cartridges from the Pennsylvania company. That's almost a terabyte of information, enough to fill about 150 laptops. Well, this represents like 125 projects, because each cartridge is a unique problem, um, uniquely damaged uh, by flood, uh, containing unique data, so, um, so we're treating them one by one. First, they checked all the material to make sure there wasn't anything caustic in the flood water. Then each disc inside the cartridges had to be cleaned. The information stored on these discs is permanent. It's actually laser etched into a chemical layer. It's a bit like trapping or freezing it inside a block of ice. The ice cubes become incredibly dirty. You can't see through it anymore. Um, there's some, been some scratches on the surface. And you can't quite read through the ice cube, and we're doing our best to polish them, clean them, and get, get that signal readable again. The discs, or optical platters, are removed from the cartridges. Each one of them is then cleaned with distilled water and special lint-free wipes. Any dirt or contaminants on the disc surface could block efforts to read them properly. They may look clean to the eye, but not be clean enough to read. So after being hung to dry, they're ready for the mother of all cleanings. Okay, let's go in the clean room. This is a class 100 clean room. We use a system of um, um, air pressure where in the inside room, the pressure is greater than the uh, ante room, which is greater than out here. So we have a constant uh, flow of air from the inside outside, driving any dust particles out into the lab. You're not going to find any particles in here larger than a millionth of a meter. Massive HEPA filters ensure this is an ultra-clean space, the best place to clean the discs one last time. This platter is going to spin at 7200 RPM, and if there's a bit of dirt there and that collides with a read-write head, we could not only lose data, but we could mar the surface of, of the optical, so cleaning is very important. Once the disc is spotless, they look closely for damage and fix any problems at something called the hexadecimal level. Windows is the highest level, graphic user interface, it looks pretty, but it's really not what your computer's doing. Different level is like DOS, lower level again. Hexadecimal is below that. Hexadecimal is not operating system dependent. It is the, the code written in this hexadecimal that outlines where all the files will be on a, on a disk drive or an optical. This book is a good analogy. 
Right now, all the letters are neatly formatted into paragraphs, sentences, and words. If this were in computer language, every letter would be represented by a series of zeros and ones at the binary level. But those zeros and ones aren't stored in any particular location on the disk. It's the hexadecimal code that keeps track of where they all belong and which keystrokes they represent. The hexadecimal code gives file structure, turns all the zeros and ones back into words and paragraphs. Technicians copy the hex code containing the data and file structure information. If they find a hole in the data itself, there's a good chance they might not be able to retrieve it. But more likely, the gaps are in the file structure. And if that's the case, they look at everything around it, apply a bit of deductive reasoning, then fill in the gaps. It's kind of like hacking our way into, into making it work again. Um, but we, we have to do that by hand. There's no technology that can do it for us. And because they work at the hex level, they're not really seeing anything intelligible. Secret data remains secret. That bodes well for some of their more sensitive clients, such as the Chinese government and the FBI. So they can put sensitive government data there and we just work around it. Um, but we, we also recognize that most of our clients don't want anyone to know they've even had a problem. It's an embarrassment. A bank wants no one to know that they could, maybe, could have lost data, uh, your account information. So, uh, so usually we, we keep things very quiet. With all the information now retrieved and sent to this computer, the last step is easy. Just pop in a new cartridge, wait for a copy to be made. SCSI copy completed successfully. Looks good. A lot of labor involved in switching these around and different things. Fin finicky work, yes indeed. And, uh, the finicky maybe, but CBL managed to recover the, all the data. Uh, it was good news for Press's client in Pennsylvania. But Press says there is a lesson to be learned. Back up, back up, back up, and never store your backup files with the originals. Because you never know when some other tropical storm with a pretty name like Allison could turn ugly and blow into your life. Obviously, the computers in the World Trade Center were damaged well beyond the point that any data could be saved from them. But... CBL data did recovery, did help one client in the building next to the Trade Center recover all the data from computers that were damaged on September 11th.